Ladies and gentlemen, Gungans and Droids across the beloved empire. Take a look out there. Tell me that it's great to be in the empire today. You're watching Arnold Howlett News, the only news you'll ever need because you have no other choice. And in today's video, CG has officially responded to the hacked issue, deleting accounts, and... No, I'm just kidding. Uh, just so you guys know, I fully expect CG to never respond to that issue we addressed. I hope they do give us steps to maybe how to avoid potentially falling prey to the backdoor hack, but I don't think we're gonna hear anything about that, although they should be. But instead, what we do have is a big boost for the Rogue One faction with the addition of Admiral Rattus in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. And what I'm excited for, Grand Arena Viability. Can you smell it in the air? Also, when you see Territory Warriors, your heart kind of drops a little bit. But here, no, 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 no. We have actually some useful stuff with Grand Arena and Admiral Rata. So quick things to note, first things first, is that this is going to be a marquee event coming out later on this week. I'm assuming on Thursday, they called the Spark of the Rebellion Marquee. Most likely out there, that's usually when they run it. A few things to note here. Whew. You know, Dash Rendar, he's got the Outrider. Yeah, he's all right, the Rebels, you know, the, the, the Rebel faction uh, the, for fleets, that is. It's not necessary, though. We've done a whole review on it. Makes me wonder if we're going to see another type of fleet sometime out there. Uh, because they also have this upload process, kind of like how it seems like kind of like how the Outrider operates. Ships. I thought that was kind of interesting. Upload progress happens when you use the blue squadron air support resisting debuffs, damaging enemies who have the exposed debuff, and using ally special abilities. Additionally, when generous will use an ability, she will gain upload at a faster rate than normal when it reaches 100% progress. It really reminds me of Outrider. Admiral Radis gets a bonus turn, and the once per turn battle ability hope can be activated. So we're seeing a lot of this lately. Star Killer, Outrider, and now with Admiral Radis as well. And this is kind of an important it's not an important question, but CG, they get really kind of quirky with their tags. Like, Best Garmando's not about here, but the ship is, you know, for balance reasons, they're gonna give tags, even though they maybe should or shouldn't have it. Why does Admiral Redis have the Rogue One tag? He wasn't part of that uh, part of that unit that comprised Rogue One. We looked at the precedent set by Biston, who also has the Rogue One tag, but was actually a door gunner for the Blue Squadron. Giving Admiral Redis the Rogue One tag allows us to have the synergy we were looking for in the kit. Well, having to exhaust without having to get exhaustively worried. So it's, it's a cop out. He's not really Rogue One, but they're just going to give it to him. And the Rogue One faction is one of those factions that desperately needs help. There's not a lot going on with this particular faction here, except really Cast is a great reinforcement. And Biston and Scarecrow Pathfinder are a good ship. And Pow is great for Mon Mothma. But we have all these other guys that are sitting around, especially Trude and Bay's meta defining characters at one point. Well, this might bring him to the forefront of the action. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at the kit that we have here. Admiral Redis is gonna be a support rebel, Rogue One, and leader. I don't know, I know this is probably a larger speculation story. We're wondering what the next Galactic Legends are. We have no idea if it's older public, or maybe we're doing something like Rebels Base. We're seeing a lot of Rebel Base things out there with Outrider, uh, with uh, for other things like the Rebel Fighters. We're also seeing things like, you know, Redis here. Hmm. Uh, there's a theory that maybe we might be getting a Leia Galact Legend. I have no idea. We are going to get one soon. I highly suspect. Light the spark. Both of the Rogue One faction are introduced to a new buff. Spark of the Rebellion. Built out of hope. Granted ability hope. Revives the allies and inflicts protection, disruption, and healing immunity. And then begin the assault. Powerful Omicron leader ability. Upgrade for Grand Arena teams. And I like this right here. This suggested synergy because it's not really pulling in the characters that we're seeing be used for other things. Like, for example, Emperor Pow with his unlimited power. And it makes you wonder, with uh, Cassian Andor, I believe it comes out, yeah, August 31st, 2022. We're probably gonna see some more Rogue One Rebel-based things sometime down the line here. But here we go, protective shot, basic ability, deal special damage, the target enemy, and grant the weakest ally protection up for 20% for two turns. We get a lot of like heals over time. There's a, Rogue One is a, currently, it's a buff heavy team. And when Jin's leading, it takes advantage of things like exposes. And we do know that Jin Urso, well, eh, hasn't really caught on. But she does have an Omicron on this unique ability here, mainly meant to bolster the territory war viability. But you know, no one talks about it. All of a sudden, Rogue One's got a Grand Arena Omicron. It's going to be a bit more important. But normally, up until now, you'd be rocking Jin Urso. 
and it looked like maybe it would be pretty solid for maybe like grievous uh, grievous teams out there you got the extra protection recovery all this other stuff you got exposed that can't be resisted and then of course we're not gonna do a full breakdown of the omicron on jenner so because it's not going to tie into the grand arena viability that we have over here bring it back over inspiring maneuver cooldown of six it's a lot of cooldowns right there with a zeta ability here we go all rebels gain protection up 50 percent protection which is going to be pretty gnarly on things like base malbus and k2 for example and recover 35 percent max tech so lots of protection regeneration capabilities on this team all ally tanks game taunt for two turns so that's another problem i guess we had k2 is one of the weirdest taunting tanks that we have in game it's gonna have a more more of a dedicated tank role base malbus was one of the best plug and play tanks in the game still useful to a minor degree just because of pre-taunts but now you have more ways to get that taunt active all rogue one allies gain spark of the rebellion for three turns which can't be copied and call all rogue one allies this is, this really sounds heavily reminiscent of mon mothma's mass swarm capability it's got protection regen it's got masses capabilities triggers a variety of different effects if the target enemy is dark side and debuff increase their cooldowns by one which excludes galactic legend so cooldown increases are always helpful no matter one of the more powerful mechanics in the game and if all allies are rogue one reduce the cooldown of inspiring maneuver by two so that's mm, really kind of forcing admiral Radis to be contained in rogue one so they can constantly spam this over and over and over and over again here and then spark of the rebellion what it does this is <laughs> greatly needed because rogue one aside from truth there's not a lot of damage on the team and even today's today's standards truth's not the heaviest damage dealer but here we go you're gonna get 40 percent offense and 30 speed if you i'll tell you a little secret there's more speed to be found in this kid. Just wait, don't get carried away. When this character attacks, recover 20% health and protection. Empire enemies defeated by this character while this buff is active can't be revived. What does that sound like to you, huh, Chiefs? What does that sound like to you? It sounds like Aiden Versio's terror is probably coming to a closer. You know, ah. Well, let's wait till the end. I have this thought on this this meta we're in i like it but i also maybe dislike it's hard to say we'll talk more about that later on here uh but this is definitely a call out to Iden versa because well she can't she normally revives if there's another imperial trooper on the field well if she dies by this spark of the rebellion she ain't coming back from that one anyways if spark of the rebellion is a spell gain 40 percent turn meter that sounds exactly like adapt or die when adapt or die expires they get turn meter on their team and you're also getting five percent upload progress and protection 50 percent for two turns a very good ability right here but keep in mind you need a very good ability for a very mediocre trashy faction so it seems extreme but it's kind of needed for a faction it's fairly dead you got to bring them up to competitiveness to 2022 standards and here we go balloon squadron airs apart with that cooldown of three this is nice it's a mass cleanse capability but for all light side allies. So it's not just Rogue One. Nice little touch there. So maybe, you know, there might be some plug and play viability in there in some degree. This ball deals from all light side allies. Then deal special damage to all enemies if Admiral Redis isn't the leader slot and not the ally slot. Gain 5% upload progress. And if this ability defeats an enemy, gain an additional 8% upload progress as well. We don't know. You haven't seen what upload does it. Don't worry. It'll all make sense here. Don't worry. I'm not letting, I'm not gonna leave you guys hanging. We're gonna get to it. But let's talk about this Omicron right here. Rebel Assault. Yeah, it's gonna replace Jenner. So in Grandarin, in Grandarin, her leadership is very, very basic here. But for each Rogue One ally at the start of battle, Rogue One allies are getting 10% health, 12% potency, eight speed. So 40 speed if you combine them all together. Eight times five puts you at 40. And then keep in mind as well, as I said, Spark of the Rebellion is giving you an extra 30 speed. So hypothetically, there could be a time where you got 70 speed. That's getting up there the Star Killer territory. Star Killer has plus 75 speed in Grand Arena or in territories. If you have the uh, Juhani Omicron, you're gonna get yourself to 70 speed as well. So that's up, that's getting up there with Star Killer speeds there. Uh, anyways, moving on though. You also get 12% tenacity. When an Empire enemy gains bonus turn meter, they are inflicted with these for two turns, which can't be resisted. And again, that sounds like a, it's uh, obviously it's gonna counter Emperor Palpatine. Emperor Palpatine's heavy turn meter based here. Boy, that's insane. Uh, that could maybe shut down Palpatine, Mar, Jade Vader things. Cause if, they, if they're getting turn meter, they're just gonna get hit with the daze right away. Ivan Versa also has turn meter in Grand Arena. 
when you're attacking out of turn they can be getting turn meter on them and then of course we said when adapter die expires turn meter gets fed to the team if a rogue one ally is critically hit by an enemy that enemy gains exposed for two turns so it's kind of bringing some of that Jenner, so exposed synergy inside the kit here. And but while in Grand Arenas, here's where that Omicron dials in here. Rogue One allies gaining 40% max. Just gotta make sure we emphasize that capital A there. Max protection at the start of the battle. All Rogue One allies are gonna get right away the spark of the rebellion. You don't have to worry about waiting to get this activated right away here all rogue one allies gain uh spark of their belly for three turns when spark of their belly is dispelled on an ally they gain critical chance up critical damage up defense up health up offense up potency up and 20 percent protection up for two turns wowza so we're already seeing all these other effects with spark of belly when it comes when it goes it just keeps getting better right here you're it's almost like an old ben sacrifice type thing to kind of keep you holding on until you're ready for that next spark of the rebellion to come on really nasty stuff here this is gonna be a really thick team all these protection increases health increases protection over time wow max protection increases Woo! then we have the unique ability right here and then we're gonna talk about hope at the very end transmission from scarab zeta admiral uh, radis gains 30 percent defense and 40 percent tenacity making sure it sticks around as long as possible no ability blocks no problems like that if Jordan Urso is an ally, she gains Spark of Rebellion to start the encounter. And when Jordan Urso loses Spark of Rebellion, she gains it again for three turns. So she's always going to have that spark in her. While Admiral Radis is alive, Jordan Urso can't be defeated. Now, I don't know if this is going to prevent things like Mando Disintegrate, Darth Nihilus. Um, I'm thinking it might be able to stop the... Um, it might not. I'm curious to see, if, like, for example, Commander Tano's insta-kill or those other fellas, which he just just stick around curious to see how that works right there if admiral radis is in the leader slot and not the ally slot he gains the granted ability hope which is right down there so if he's in the if he's if you're trying to plug him into like a rebel fighter team not gonna work out you're not gonna get the hope going on if admiral radis is oh sorry admiral radis gains one percent upload progress for each detrimental effect resisted by a rogue one ally that extra tenacity on the admiral radis and that tenacity on the rest of the rogue one it's probably gonna help out there Whenever a Rogue One ally deals damage to an enemy with Exposed, Admiral Radis gains 1% upload progress for each stack of Exposed on that enemy. And then whenever a Rogue One ally uses a special ability, Admiral Radis gains 2% upload. When Jirno so uses the basic or special ability, Admiral Radis gains 5% upload. And at 100%, he gets the bonus turn, so you can't prevent it. It's like Anakin Skywalker. No days can stop it. You can maybe stun him, perhaps? That could stop him from taking that bonus turn. Limit to once used for battle. It requires 100% upload progress to activate. Revive all allies. Yikes. Imagine how annoying that can be. Now, keep in mind, I believe anti-revive things will stop those certain allies to come back. Like, for example, Mando or Nihilus. And all allies recover 100% health and protection. Then, deal true damage to all enemies and inflict protection disruption. Whoa. That's disgusting. And healing immunity four four turns which can't be dispelled evaded or resisted and then here we go hope we're not even, uh, <laughs> this is a pretty nutty bill it's just a regurgitation of what we just read right there but wow um pretty nice ability pretty nice kit again it sounds like a lot and it is a lot we're going to see how it applies to the rogue one squadron here but do note uh cg they've been pretty much on the head when it comes to creating one character to revitalize a faction, Kyle Katarin, at Mon Mothma, uh, Mara Jade, then for example, uh, what's the other fellow that we had? Uh, Aiden Versio, of course. Um, I don't know, I, I will say this, it seems like Aiden Versio, I mean, maybe time works differently in my mind, but she's only been around for what? You know, this is going to her six months, and it already sounds like you have so many ways the counter to her especially if wampo Omicron. now this so it's not bad because you can still bring Aiden in offense and she's fantastic but it definitely seems like it's not the top layer the galactic legend meta isn't shifting a lot it's not really even the a tier meta it's more of this like b a minus b plus tier meta that's getting a lot of shifts here but nonetheless with the ever expanding grand arena meta leftover characters you might be have sitting around that you just geared up for the ship you're gonna get a lot of use out of it the question i have i gotta double check real quick is the Wampa gonna get through this? If Wampa has turn meter gain, I have to double check. If Wampa has turn meter gain, uh-oh, that could be a problem. That could be a problem. Getting the 20% turn meter gain, getting unresistable days, ignoring all the tenacity 
That said, Wampa, because of Raddus, I boy, this could be tricky for Wampa to even solo. Ooh, yeah, we got several turn meter gained abilities on this kit here. So uh, you might need to be careful. You might need to be careful when trying this out here, especially if Wampa is not going to get counterattacks and because of unresistible days. This looks to be a potentially solid team in that B, A minus tier, but I'm going to pass the ball over to you guys. What are you thinking? You think we might be building up to some sort of a uh, Leia Galactic Legend potentially? I think I'm going to be a fan of this character in the kit though. It's looking pretty darn solid. Ah, but you know what? Maybe you guys got a different opinion. And that's why I love talking to you guys. Leave that like, comment down below, subscribe. Sir, you're not missing a thing. And even though there's rebel love right now, just always remember, please, that it's great to be in the Empire today.